Welcome to our Bollywood Seder. Our, we're here from Mumbai to Matso. And so what we're going to do in this Seder is talk about the cuisine of the Jewish people of India. Hi, I'm Jeff. And I'm Sujatha. We knew you as late to travel. I was traveling all over the world, but then came the pandemic. I was traveling too, but I had a stroke in 2016. And now together we're going to travel the world. We discovered romance and adventure. It's the year 5784 in the Hebrew calendar. Passover, the night where the dinner is held is called the Seder. Bible standards. We gather commemorating the exodus of the ancient Israelites from the land of Egypt, which is called in Hebrew Mitzrayim. Passover is a very important um, holiday for Jews, one of the major holidays where they celebrate their liberation from Egypt as slaves. It takes on a little bit of a different meaning when you're in India and I'm going to talk about um, for our Seder we've pre prepared many of the Ashkenazi favorites like we have matzo balls and we have matzo crackers and we have gefilte fish. And we have gefilte fish being the, the flaky fish that's put into meatballs and just put in a brine. Um, and and, but we've done some of the um, Indian classics. So there's three different Indian communities that we'll be celebrating. Um, the first one is Cochin. Uh, so Cochin is in the southwest of India on the coast. And this is the oldest uh, Jewish community in all of India. Um, we don't know when they came here, but they were at least there at 1200 AD. And the other thing is that Cochin has another Jewish Jewish community, which is they call the Pardeshi Jews. When the Jews were expelled from Spain in 1492, a lot of them came to Cochin. And so there's two different communities. And so what I did was a kofta fish curry. Um, and what you notice in this is there's lots of spices. Um, we're in the south of India. This is where spices come from. So it is very spicy. It's full. It's just loaded with about 10 different spices and it's quite amazing. Um, so that's the other community that we're looking at is the Bene Israel. And the Bene Israel is very interesting because they say that a long time ago they were shipwrecked and they ended up um, with only seven men and seven women who survived. They apparently prayed to Elijah who is a prophet and that's how they survived. Okay, Elijah is a central prophet in the what's called the Old Testament or the Hebrew Bible. In Jewish lore, he was the only person who ascended to heaven. The Melita is an offering to Elijah who saved the Bene Israel. Melita, a special dish made of local specialties. For example, fruits, ground coconut, sugar, and poi, a type of flattened rice. There was such excitement over this dish, it became a mainstay of other celebrations in the Jewish community that made up the New Year's Yom. And what's interesting is that it's found nowhere else in Judaism. Um, so this, to me, as a Hindu, looks a lot like a prasad, which is the offering that we give to the gods at the temple. Now the other thing about Melida is that it's um, usually, and in Judaism, there's only one God. You do not pray to God asking for, for offerings, but you do that in Hinduism for prosperity, for love, for, uh, for health. Um, and so the Jews of Ben Israel actually uh, ask Elijah to offer them blessings. Now, something special about that circumstance that the Jewish community was able to celebrate without much fear of anti-Semitism. In Europe, you kind of have to be careful not to be too festive in an open way. But in the context of Ali Bag, you could. So there's a kind of a convergence of Hinduism, Islam, and Judaism. Not totally, but in terms of gathering together socially. The other dish we have is a coconut rice from the Bene Israel. 
And the third community is the Baghdadi Jews of Calcutta. And what's interesting about the Baghdadi Jews is they're more recent. I mean, by recent, I mean more like the 18th or 19th century that they came with British colonialization. And so they came from the Middle East as well. And so they bring, they don't have a lot of the spices. They have a little bit of turmeric. They don't, but they don't really go into cumin or cardamom or anything. They have a, a, a spicing that is very um, Middle Eastern. So a lot of nuts, raisins, mint, lemon, um, very different spicing. So we have from them a chicken curry, um, with, which is very different from the Indian chicken curry, but there's some similarities. And um, the other dish we have is stuffed vegetables, so stuffed tomatoes, which is very much um, something you'd find in the Middle East, except they put turmeric in it and they put other things. Instead of beef or lamb, they're using chicken. An essential part of the Seder is the Seder plate. Different things on this plate mean different themes in the Jewish experience in the ancient period. We have here, normally instead of an elongated beat, you'd have a shank bone, represents God taking out the people of Israel from, from slavery, like an extended arm or wing. You have over here a combination of things called heroset, which represents mortar for the bricks of the slaves that were working in ancient Egypt. You have bitter herbs over here, which is parsley or could be lettuce, that represent the bitterness of slavery. And the egg is rather mysterious because it depicts in a certain way almost coming alive at springtime, life itself. Or because it's roundish, it represents also a cycle of life, a cyclical existence. We have horseradish, which is called chain, which represents bitterness in the slavery experience. And the masa itself, according to the legend, when when the Israelites left Egypt, they had to no time to prepare actual leavened bread. So you can just ask yourself, which do you prefer better? Do you prefer the Ashkenazi, the European Jewish food, or the Indian Jewish food? Come travel with us. Please subscribe to our channel, Here's Travel. So do it. If you like this video, you may like this video, which covers the Muslim caretakers of a synagogue in Calcutta.